Uh, I want to talk about Enoch. That is yet another place where the Bible becomes silent after a place. You see? Now, let us read right away and then I will explain to you. The book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5 verses 18 to 24 it says, When Jared had lived 162 years, he became the father of Enoch. Verse 19. And after he became the father of Enoch, Jared lived 800 years and had other sons and daughters. Verse 20 he says, Altogether, Jared lived 962 years, and then he died. Hallelujah. And Enoch had lived 65 years. He became the father of Methuselah. Again, in the Bible, that is another person I'm very interested in, so much Methuselah, and his lineage, the descendants. Verse 22. And after he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Hallelujah. Verse 23. Altogether, Enoch lived 365 years. Verse 24, he repeats this. Enoch walked with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. Hallelujah. So that is where I want to base our conversation today. That is where I want to launch this very, very important conversation. What do you see here? Let me first begin right away. Jared. Jared lived 162 years and had Enoch. And then he lived another 800 years and then had sons and daughters but died. You see that? And then Enoch now lives 65 years. After 65 years, of course, he had Methuselah. But listen to this now. After 65 years, Enoch then walked with God for 300 years. And then when you go down there, he emphasizes to you again. He said, Enoch walked with God and was no more because the Lord took him away. That's where I want us to focus today. I want to focus there. Hallelujah. And so, I was reading this scripture and then the Lord helped me. He helped me to understand this. That Jared, you, you got the whole lineage, you can follow the rest also. They lived. And he says, and when they lived, see, 162 years, for example, Jared, 800 years, and then died. You see that? And Enoch lived 65 years. Then after that he says, and then he walked with God 300 years. You see that? So altogether, 365 years. And they say, Enoch walked with God and was no more because the Lord took him away. Hallelujah. What is the emphasis being stressed, being highlighted there? Through this scripture now, the Lord is using this scripture now to open up your inner eyes. He's highlighting that there are differences here. Kuna tafauti hapa. He's saying, lived 962 years and died. But walked with God and no more. Did you understand? He's saying that right from the word go, if you were to take this scripture, just the few verses I read, 
and use them as a lens I want to put on my eye. You understand? A lens. And use it now to look at the church. And then I realize that this scripture is asking many big questions to the church right now. Hallelujah. This scripture is screaming out to the church a very important, a very significant question at this hour. Again I said, if you take that scripture and it becomes a lens. Now if you, if the glasses with, through which now you want to see a prism. Through which you want to look at the church. Huh? Huh? And it says, you will see a very important question that the Lord is asking the church. Because in this scripture is highlighting that there is a difference kuna tafauti between living living lived he lived all these years and died and walking with God huh right from the word go the lens meaning how about you the church today are you living in the house just living he says if you just live in the house you will live and die that's what he's saying if you use this as a lens to look at the church now, you will see two congregations inside the house. You will see those who are living in the house. I say, I am living a Christian life. For me, I am born again. The Lord I love. And I am living a Christian life. And you say, that's okay. But then you'll see a second congregation in the same house of those who are walking with God. I'm coming. And he says, if you just live, you will die. You will die. But if you walk with God, you will be no more. Because you will be taken up by the Lord. I'm going to open it for you. Don't worry step by step. So you may be able to understand. That if you just live, the Bible says they lived and died. But for him he lived and then the other 300 years he actually walked with God. And, and then he repeats it. Because he walked with God he was no more. Because the Lord did what? Took him away. Huh? So the question then becomes the church today. The King's Outreach Church. The other churches. Are you merely living in the house? Say, I am Christian. Born again. I am alive. I'm living here. Huh? Because if you do so, you will die. I'm talking about in the house inside you will die because he says there is a difference here between just living he said i am born again and i see i understand why daniel when the lord showed him the vision the lord showed me daniel saw differences he saw those who are wise they entered they entered right because he says they were shining like the brightness of the heavens. Which means their bodies were glorious to that extent, right? And then he saw another group. Those who lead many to righteousness. Why the gradation? Why the difference? It tells me, you can sit in the house and be wise. Which means you live in the fear of the Lord, right? Oh yes. And you'll enter. You see that? The fear of the Lord. But he's saying, when time comes now, behold, I come, my reward is in my hand. Do I give each according to what they have done? Then he said, those who lead many into righteousness, they will shine like the brightness, like the stars forever and ever. You see that? Meaning, 
Look, from the same pool, yeah, same group, who are going to enter? They are all wise. They are all wise people, right? They all have the fear of the Lord, otherwise you cannot enter, right? Jesus said the wise virgin enters. You have to be wise to begin with. That's the benchmark, right? But, there are those who went a step further. There are those who are brighter like the stars, brighter than the heavens. Why? Because now they lead others into righteousness. And here too, he's now saying, you can all be in the house. You're all in the house. Are you born again? We are born again. Are you Holy Ghost? I am Holy Ghost filled. But are you walking with the Lord in the house? Do you understand what he's raising here? Which means, with this lens, you should now be able to ask, in my salvation, in my being in this house, the house of the Lord, am I really walking with the Lord? Because if I am walking with the Lord, the Lord will take me away. And I'm going to read further and you'll see what that means. Taken away, no more. Taken away, meaning, will not see death. This universal death you see touching people. You see that? Will not see death. Hallelujah. If the Messiah comes tonight, you will just be happy. You will be alright. You understand? Listen to this. Or, if you die tonight, and you are in right standing, you will still be happy. You will still be alright. Hallelujah. But anyhow, let me read further, so we can help here. Turn with me, precious people, as we develop this. Genesis 3, 7 to 13, I'm reading. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together, and made covering for themselves. Then men and his wife heard the sound of the Lord, the Lord God, as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Hallelujah. The Lord was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They heard, we must have heard the footsteps. You see that? How tremendous, right? Hmm? But listen to what happened. Hmm? In the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. <laughs> huh? But the Lord God called to them, Where are you? Where are you? He's saying that Kumbe, how are you? Right a little bit behind there. The Lord walked in the garden in the cool of the day. That's the first thing you pick from there. Number two. When mankind, Adam, and plus Eve, were in right standing with the Lord. You understand? Oh, that means they walked with the Lord. Did somebody understand me? He walked in the garden in the cool of the day. And that, let's stop everything for now, forget about what has happened now, let's push it back. That means when they were in obedience, in right standing with the Lord, right? Whenever the Lord came to the garden, they walked, he walked there, and he was with them. And they walked with God in the garden, in the cool of the day. Meaning when the sun is now, the heat is off a little bit, you know. Hmm? So, Adam and Eve walked with God. They walked with the Lord. Huh? Where are 
are you? And you know it makes you almost deaf, eh? You understand, eh? Because I hear that question right now being asked. I hear shouting in the house, eh? I hear it. I hear him saying, Where are you? In the church today. Huh? You don't need to go any further. You just need to go to the first church, right? The primitive church. Whose anointing is supposed to be much lower. Very low. Look at the first church. Paul. Peter. John. At one point they are walking to Emmaus. Right? As they walked, he was here. He was here. Also talking, conversationing with them. Huh? What is this you are discussing about Jerusalem? What has happened there? If you look at their ministry, they walked with God. Where are you? I hear it. Where are you? Tulikuwa tunatembea anga pamoja. Sasa uko wapi? Si saa zetu za kutembea mefika in the cool of the day. Tunafaa kutembea pamoja. Uko wapi? I hear that question. Shouting out to the church. Where are you? No. I saw you and I hid. Ah! Now you are hiding. What happened? You are now hiding. From me. In the cool of the day. Now, you see the fall of man from where everything went wrong. In the garden of Eden. Man walked with God. And you see that when the Lord finally, of course I'm jumping ahead, fast forward again. Finally, after the fall, finally finds Enoch. And I'm going to describe to you everything about him. Actually, Enoch is a prophet. But the Lord did not allow us to have his oracles. They are here, they, they are mentions here and there. That's why I said the Bible goes a little silent. You will see the prophecy Enoch gave. You can call him the silent prophet because I hear the Bible goes going silent there. But when there is a fall. And then later, fast forward, he finds Enoch. Now he walks with him. He walks with him. He found a friend again. What was that for telling to the church? What was the Lord foreshadowing? What was he saying? What was the prophecy about the life of Enoch? Because and Enoch walked with God and was no more. Actually, the word is was raptured, right? Hallelujah. What was the Lord foretelling by Enoch? Finding Enoch, loving him, walking with him, no more. And then he makes a distinction in that scripture. He says, those who merely lived died. But when anything called walked with God was attached to anyone, Enoch, only here, he was taken away by the Lord. He never saw death. This universal death that is killing people. He did not see it. Invincible, right? And he says, He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. 
And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? You are going to see from this scripture the character of Enoch. What the church lost, what humanity lost in the garden, and what Enoch heard for walking with God to be restored in him. And he says, The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate. It means I disobeyed you. Hmm? Then the Lord said to the woman, What is this you have done? I'm jumping to verse 15 right away, after the curse. And he says, and I will put enmity, I'll put animosity, in other words, between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. And he will crush your head, and you he will strike his heel. They walked with the Lord. Then they fell. Right? Then the judgment came. And then you move forward now. And the curse, the curse of death came. <laughs> righteousness is very powerful. You see the power of righteousness, right? When they were righteous, they defeated death. No, no, let me explain to you first of all. The Garden of Eden, it actually came from a Persian word. In fact, they called it paradise. Actually, they describe it as paradise, right? Hallelujah. At paradise, there was no death. So you see the blueprint of the creation of the church. When he created the Garden of Eden, you see the original plan of God. He intended that there be no death. Do you understand me? I jumped the curse. I said the curse. After the curse, then I went to verse 15, which I'm going to explain to you now. Look, look at this now. When you read further on, you find that inside the garden, and Eden, again I said Eden now, and the garden, and the river came from Eden, watered the garden. You see that? Listen to this now. The garden was well spelt out, the garden, right? In the garden, there was the tree of life. The tree of life was there. The tree whose leaves, if you eat, you are healed. You never die. Do you understand why it was called paradise? So the first plan of God, you see it very clearly now. The reason I'm passing you through this basic scripture is because I want you to understand the power of sin and the power of righteousness. Two things. I want you to understand that in the beginning, the way the Lord created man, He put him in paradise where there would be no death. Man would have lived eternal in the garden. That was the first plan, the original plan. That if as long as you will walk with God, for as long as you will continue walking with God in this garden, you will not see death. I, that's amazing. That means mankind was going to live forever. Both created and forever now. That's why he said paradise. But I'm going to go to the book of Revelation and define to you the paradise he's talking about. Eternal life. Look at this now. Down there, I don't know if I'm going to get time to read them because I have more important seven scriptures at the end. He says, there was the river of life. 
what I'm trying to bring to you is that you may understand God's original plan that had no death in the equation. And you can see how sin can really spoil. Sin brought death. And now we are in this one. That's how we are now. You live and die. Now death, oh, people are dying. They say, ah, death is invincible. No, that was not the original plan. I want you to see how sin can be a spoiler in your lives and you translate this into your lives and ministry. You understand me? Hmm? God creates men eternal. Ati huyu hata kufa. Hakuna kukufa kwa huyu. Awezi kukufa huyu. Nime muumba hata kufa. Alafu anafanya makosa moja pa kifo. Mpaka saizi na kifo ikaingilia yeye watoto wake, watoto wa watoto wake, 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 all the way. Do you see the gravity of sin? If you will catch this, you will reject sin today. Huh? And then, there is only one word that equals to righteousness in this scripture. So if you catch that word finished, that's what it says, obedience equals to righteousness. Because what brought the problem, what brought the curse, what brought this universal death was disobedience. As long as men disobeyed the voice of God, finished, it ended right there. Did you understand now? But no, I want to go to Enoch because there's some things about Enoch I want to bring to you and give to you. I'm just using this to build the foundation for now. How about chapter 3 verse 15? And he says, And I'll bring animosity and enmity between you and the snake, between the offspring of the woman and the snake, and he'll crush the head. The serpent. Crush the head, right? And you strike the heel. You see what I'm saying? Tell me. You know, when I look at that scripture, oh, 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 I say one thing, that God is just. God is justified. God is love. Because men disappointed him very badly. They, 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 you just start like this. Boom. For example, you have a son. You prepared him. He's now ready. You want to take him to school. You look for him in school, you don't find him. You see that? He breaks your heart. Because you had a plan. And they, can you imagine greater things for him? Hmm? Or a daughter. You take to school, you hear, pregnant. Send you. It breaks your heart. It really break, cuts you. But no, I'm just trying to make you understand what man did to the Lord. Broke his heart. But look at that. In all that, he still wrote verse 15. In all that broken heartedness, he still gave us verse 15. So the question is, was this the pronouncement that begins the dispensation of the grace? Could this have been the beginning of the dispensation of the grace? Or oh, are these the pronouncements that foretold of the coming of the dispensation of grace? Okay, however, don't worry because I am the Lord Jehovah and I never lose. So at the end, I still have to win. So I have to bring him to crush the serpent. Because he never loses. You see that? But also in that way, you see the great love from the Lord to the church. He loved so much. They said, don't worry. I'll still bring plan B. I want you to understand that there is a big difference between just being being living there in that house huh, and walking with God in these days that has come out very clearly number two I have also now brought out the gravity of sin there was this was paradise he says, after they fell, 
Then he placed the two cherubim of glory at the eastern gate, right? With a, with a flaming sword. Why? Because he says, to stop men from accessing the tree of life. Because he knew now that if man gets access to the tree of life, in all this, eh, he'll go and eat it, he'll just live forever. But now sinful, of course. So listen to this. Two cherubim of glory. Huh? The tree of life. But we know that he is enthroned between the two cherubim. You know that? So that tells me that the ark of God was in the garden. That means God was in the garden. No wonder paradise. And I will go to the book of Revelation and now define to you what he de 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 defines by paradise. Hmm? So the ark of God was in the garden. That's why the two cherubim of glory were there with their flaming sword to, 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 to bring judgment. Right? But listen to this now. Hmm? That means, in his original plan, look at what happened. Look, because it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So in that original plan, he said this, let me take paradise. What does paradise mean? Blessedness. The manifestation of blessedness. That's the paradise. Where there is eternal peace. Paradise is eternal peace, by the way. We, let's use peace. Eternal peace. Where will we ever, where will we get, where will we get eternal peace? Right now. In heaven. See you. So the Lord removed the blessedness of heaven and brought to the earth for you. That you may live forever in peace and in perfect fellowship with Him, walking with Him in the cool of the day. Did you understand that? The cherubim of glory were there, which means the ark of God was there. And when sin came, guess what? Removal. Removed. He removed His presence from there. He removed the ark from there. Hallelujah. Turn with me the book of Psalm, Psalm 40, the, Psalm 49, 49 verse 15. It says, But God will redeem my life from the graves. He will surely take me to himself. Listen very carefully. Enoch walked with God and was no more. Meaning the Lord did what? Took it. To took him. To be with him. I'm just trying to explain this step by step. Okay? So you may understand what happened to Enoch. Again, listen to this now. Enoch walked with God. I've just told you. when I've explained to you. As Adam and Eve. Actually his wife. They walked with God. We don't know the time dispensation. We don't know. The Bible never tells. We don't know the different the distances between one verse to the next in Genesis. We don't know if it's a billion years, a trillion years, or two days, or ten days, or ten years. We don't know. After he created the wife, they could have lived, I don't know how many years, I don't know. But, they walked with God. And on the day that they disobeyed God and sinned, they ran, They heard him coming now and ran and hid. It was over. Enoch, Enoch walked with God in the cool of the day and was no more taken by God. Did not see death. Meaning, Adam and Eve walking with God every day in the cool of the day were not meant to see death. But now, no more taken is what I'm trying to explain here in 49. And he says, but God will redeem my life from the graves. Meaning, he will not see death. You understand? But God will redeem my life from the graves. And he will surely take me to himself. Do you understand what happened to Enoch? So do you understand the blueprint, the plan A of God? That you would not die. 
that you would never see death. The book of Luke chapter 16 verse 22. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried in hell where he was in torment. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called out to them. He called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Because I am in agony in this fire. Ah, huh? See, that's the opposite of paradise. But listen to this now. According to the Jewish setting, the Jewish description, they say, he went to Abraham's side. Heaven. Paradise. To them, paradise is... That's why we were grafted though, by the way. But anyway, he went to Abraham's side. That's the Jewish description of paradise. That when God created man, the plan of God was that you be on Abraham's side. Because the other side you know now. Fire. That's now the Jewish description of paradise. Genesis chapter 2 verses 8 to 10. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden. And there he put the man he had formed. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. Are we there? In the middle of the garden were the tree of life. You understand me? But where is the tree of life now? Huh? Somebody tell me, where is the tree of life now as we speak? Withdrawn into heaven, right? But listen to this, and I will give you that vision if I get a chance today. Hmm? And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I am now going to uh, describe to you the description of paradise in the book of Revelation chapter 2. Because you can, you, you can read at home Genesis chapter 3, verse 23 to 24. But I'm going to now move to the message of Enoch. And before I do so, Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I'll give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Do you understand now properly? Do you understand what the Lord transplanted from heaven for your sake? No, but first of all, what you see there is this. Do you understand the enormity, the gravity of sin? What sin is capable of doing? What sin is capable of doing in your life and ministry? God transplanted paradise from heaven and brought down here that you may never die. One, look, look, look. Everybody focus on me. Once you are created like you, I'm seeing you now. I'm looking at you with my eyes. You are not going to die. You are not supposed to die eternally. Can, can you imagine the amount of peace? No disease, no sickness. Peace. You just be, that is it. It is finished. We will not die. Once you are created, finished. You would live in joy and peace and worship and fellowship forever. Did you understand me? No, but therein I want to see, I want you to see the seriousness of sin and how God looks at sin with such gravity. He cannot take it. Genesis three twenty-three twenty-four. So the Lord God banished him from the garden of Eden to walk the ground from which he had been taken. I made him from the ground, he says. 
God is powerful. He could make from the ground and mold him and he was meant to be eternal from the soil. But anyway, this is what he says now. He said, after he drove men out, he placed on the east side of the garden of Eden, cherubim and the flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. So in other words, the, the, the paradise the Lord is talking about is synonymous with the tree of life. Because the tree of life, that is eternal life now. Nobody would die. You fall sick, you eat the leaves, you are healed, and you move on eternally. No death. So now he's saying, that paradise, now you can already see for yourself where we are heading to in heaven. That's why we must do this right. We really have to do this right. That, because th that's what Jesus can do. He came to restore. Restore the paradise that was lost. Oh, what a price he paid, right? Revelation chapter 2 verse 7 we saw the definition of paradise. He said paradise is where there was what? The tree of life. Revelation 22 verses 1 to 5 and then I'll come to the message of Enoch. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb he saw the river of life flowing down the main street huh? and he said the river that flows in that vision when the Lord took me right in front of the throne the two cherubi of glory they were bowing their heads walking on the golden walkway carrying the ark of the new covenant of the Lord then they put it at the throne position as you face as I face the, 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 the throne the, the ark of God the ark of God the cherubi on this side has a different role. So he crosses this way, he peels off a section of the scripture that is written on the chest of the ark of the new covenant of the Lord. And then they all go behind and then they bow like this. And then he showed, then they, of course he showed me the river that flows behind, now behind the throne. And I saw the river going, I saw the tree on this side and the tree on this side. But here he's saying one thing. He's saying, that that river flows from the throne of God. The throne. Kitija Enzi. And that quickly tells me that he is enthroned between the two cherubim. And that quickly tells me that when the Lord brought paradise down here, he literally brought the throne of God down here. Did you understand that? Do you understand how bad sin can be? What sin denied us? He literally brought the throne down here. Because now we see the arrangement of the river of life. We see the arrangement of the tree now. And can we read further on? And he says, On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing the twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Eh? No longer will there be any curse. Now you see the restoration Christ brought? You see the an annulling of the curse. Have you seen the scripture? No longer will there be any curse. But now that's a derivative. We go back and we saw how sin spoiled for us. So you that fools around with sin, lusting at women, lusting at men, whichever the case, playing around, trying to touch money in this gospel, now you can see the enormity of sin, what sin can do. So when Jesus came, this curse, the curse of death, that's what he's talking about here, never again, he withdrew paradise back to heaven. Revelation 22 verse 14. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may go through the gates into the city. Of course, outside it says the dogs, the sexually immoral, and name it. But have you seen now? Blessed are those who do what? Who gain access to the tree of life. That is what he's saying essentially. The Lord Jesus gave us access again to the tree of life that we may not die again 
Plan A was beautiful. But out of the sin of one man. Can you see the gravity of your sin as a pastor? Out of the sin of one man. There can be tragic consequences upon generations of congregations and people and families and communities. For this one of humanity. Consequence. Did you understand me? And, and sin has never ceased to have that capacity. It still has the same capacity. Today, I wanted to emphasize to you the gravity of sin. But let's we move, move on the, now the message. But I wanted you to understand the difference between living in the house. How are you? I am well. Are you born again? Yes, I am. Are you Holy Ghost? Oh, yes, I'm Holy Ghost filled. I woke up and left his wake up. This is us, sir. But are you walking with the Lord? Are you walking with God in that house? That was the initial question, and that is the question today. Revelation 22 19, right? It says, And if anyone takes words away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share of the tree of life. And in the holy city, which are described in this book. So did you understand what the Lord fronted to us as the blessing? In fact, paradise is about the tree of life. So when the Lord brought paradise down, it is actually the tree of life He brought down. He brought here, that you may not die. So what does it mean that Enoch, I already gave you a first scripture, that Enoch walked with God and was no more. I already read to you the book of Psalm 49 verse 15, meaning... He would now escape the wrath of the grave. He would never see death again. The universal death you see consuming men that is so much revered and feared globally. So, by walking, the power of walking with God. I'm going to describe to you today what it means to walk with God. That is the whole purpose of this message today. Turn with me the book of uh, uh, Psalm 73, verse 24. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward, you will take me into glory. Huh? How beautiful. Did you understand what Enoch went through? And he says, you guide me with your counsel. Again, look at this now. Walking with God. Walking with God. We are beginning to understand what it means to walk with God. He says, that means walking under the guidance of the counsel of Jehovah. Uh, nobody heard me properly there. Huh? He's saying, it literally means walking under the counsel of the Lord. I'm now beginning to open up bit by bit on what does it mean that Enoch walked with God. And he says, you guide me with your counsel. You know, it shows me, walk this way, go this way. You guide me with your counsel. You guide me with your counsel and then you take me into your glory. Huh? So he's saying, it essentially means submitting to the counsel of the Lord. So you see now where the difference between Adam and Christ is. No, no, let, let's not go to Christ yet. Adam, because that's the mere motto of human. Eh? Adam and Enoch. Because Enoch was the foretelling now. That you church, if you will walk with God, you will not see death. That which you lost in Eden, in the garden, will be restored. The paradise will be restored. The tree of life will be. You guide me with your counsel. And you see, that is now where the problem is. Disobedience unto the counsel of the Lord. Did God really say that you cannot eat it? And I said, look, look everybody. The only word, obedience equal to righteousness. As long as you obey the counsel of the Lord. Read the book of Jude 14, 15. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone. 
and to convict all the ungodly, if I were you, I make the word ungodly a market, all the ungodly of all the ungodly acts they have, that they have done in the ungodly way, and of all the harsh words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So, listen, precious people. Enoch saw the coming of the Messiah. And that's why I said, he is a prophet. I always like where the Bible goes a little silent. Those are the areas I like the Lord to lead me to. Because therein lies treasure. You see that? There is a hidden thing that for only those that shall seek, shall it be revealed to. Right? Because he's saying, he saw the coming judgment. He saw the king coming, the king of glory. Enoch saw the coming of the Messiah. And he was coming to judge. And when he came with thousands upon thousands, then you see now the book of Revelation 19 from verse 14. Verse 14 actually, literally. You understand? Because he says, you people will participate in that judgment. But he's saying that Enoch actually saw he saw the coming of the Messiah and he gave the prophecy here. This is very powerful because most of the time not much is spoken about him. But he foretold of what? The judgment that would come and he emphasized the word ungodly. You understand? Upon the ungodly for the ungodly act they did in the most ungodly ways and ungodly ungodly. Harsh ungodly words. Hmm? Hallelujah. Step by step, I'm now moving on. The book of Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to now open to you the treasure that Enoch had that endeared him unto the Lord. We are reading from verse 5. Can I? By faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. Hallelujah. And he says, he could not be found because God had taken him away. And now you and I know that the reason he could not be found, God had taken him away because he, he walked with God and under the leadership of the counsel of the Lord. You understand? That means if the Lord says sexual lust is sin, you will not be found there. If he says the preaching of the false doctrine of prosperity and falsehood is sin, you will not be found there. Hallelujah. And as you see, and, and so God, uh, God had taken him away. For because he was taken, he was commanded. Accreditation is happening here, right? He was commanded as one who pleased God. So you see what it means to walk with God? It means to please God. You must please God if you're walking with the Lord. That means you have to be righteous. That's the only thing that pleases the Lord. Total obedience to His word. Not 90% precious people. Huh? Ah, see, I'm in the ministry of repentance. Let me just see now repent. Don't do that. Don't do that. And he says, again, he was commended as one who pleased God. So if you wanted to write some of the points about Enoch, number one, pleasing God. The other one we saw walking under the council. You wrote those things, right? And the next one he says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Which means Enoch was faithful. Hallelujah. He was faithful unto the Lord. Which means the Lord could rely on him. He relied on the Lord and the Lord also in turn could rely on him. I, that one is my faithful servant. You even go try him. No, he will not. God had faith in him. Trusted him. He, he, he believed in him. Huh? He, 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 he dependable. He was dependable. Trustworthy unto the Lord. I can go and come back a few years later find he's still the same. He has not changed. Huh? Faithful unto the Lord. Eh? He says, and without faith it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So Enoch was also doing what? Seeking the Lord. Hallelujah. May 
May the Lord be blessed. So today now you know a little bit about Enoch. And that Enoch was a righteous man. An obedient man. That Enoch was a God-fearing man. Now you know what it takes to walk with God. Faithful. Obedience. Seeking God. Pleasing God. Under the counsel of God. Not seeing the grave hands. Consequently cannot see the grave. How beautiful. Hmm? You guide me with your counsel. And you take me into your glory.